I know I've mentioned it in the past, but this is by far my favorite welding tool. Welcome back to the Lost Cause Ranch. It's been a minute, but as you can see behind me, we are finally back playing with one of my favorite things here. That is right, the LS3 swapped Land Rover Defender. We left off last time with kind of a mess on our custom aluminum dash with a little bit of cardboard, a little bit of failure, but today that goes away. This goes away. I'm not gonna throw this. We'll set this down nicely. And we are moving along with the custom aluminum dashboard. Our dilemma starting out with this one is we are in the USA. The USA is typically a left-hand drive vehicle market. This was a European import, England to be exact, and was a right-hand drive unit. And we could have went the easy route and just bought a left-hand drive dashboard for a classic Defender. But then we went down the wormhole of wanting air conditioning and not liking how the air conditioning is handled with the classic Defender Dash. Our next option would have been a Puma Dash. And with the vintage look of the first gen Defenders, I didn't want that either. So here we are today. Our left-hand drive solution involves a custom aluminum dashboard. Wish me luck. Luckily in our little shop here, we are equipped with some of the necessary tools to make this happen, i.e. a sheet metal brake, a mill, the CNC laser. I don't think we'll need the lathe, but mainly our little CNC plasma table. This thing is gonna be a lifesaver on this project. So we have another quick aluminum project to knock out before we get started on the dash. And what's nice about this one is it's the same exact material. So we're able to dial it in on this guy. That's gonna be a little less critical on the end finish. That was a nice quick little warm up for what we're gonna be doing with the dashboard on the Defender. This is the same 16 gauge aluminum, kind of a similar process with the bend in and the weld in, but either way, we got a couple trays knocked out. Man, my life right now is just freaking chaos and a mess. Self-induced, but a mess nonetheless. Hopefully by the end of this video, we're a little more straightened out, but the good news is we have another sheet of aluminum, fresh stuff, loaded up on the little plasma and we have some more sitting here. We're gonna get the center stack cut back out. If you remember last video, this didn't work out that great. Because unknowingly, I grabbed a piece of anodized aluminum and that just doesn't fly too well in the welding aspect. We could have made it work, but realistically this whole LS swap deal with a new chassis, new bulkhead, new everything, is kind of a no compromise deal. So we're not gonna half ass something for the sake of time. So either way, we switched up a couple things. We're going about this a little bit different way with the new aluminum. And I made a couple modifications to tidy everything up. And with my dirty laptop screen, you can see the biggest change is these two side panels are now separate from the center. After like 15 years of having one of these things, that still never gets old to watch. So this thin aluminum is the exact example as to why with one of these CNC plasmas, you want a decent automatic torch height control. You saw the warpage as it was cutting. With height control, it senses the voltage and it moves up and follows the metal and it keeps the correct distance between the nozzle and the material. Leaving us with a pretty decent cut without a massive amount of cleanup needed. We'll get the water off fairly quick because it will stain the aluminum. There's a bunch of different stuff in there that we don't want on here. Those of you who watched the last video on this will notice the one key difference this time around is we went with three separate pieces. We could do it in one piece like we did last time, but 
I had to jerry-rig some stuff up. Whenever you get to that point, you gotta do a little improvisation. To make that bend happen. And beans, we got to do a little test piece with those little trays I made earlier. This is gonna weld pretty nice, and the edge where these two pieces meet, we'll be able to grind the weld down and make it look nice and clean, and we'll probably have a better result doing it this way versus trying to do a bend here and a bend there. With the equipment I have, I'm not able to do that. Same visual result, different way of going about it. But before we bend it, we need to lay out where we're gonna bend it. So essentially what we're making here is this same profile on this guy. So we're gonna need to lay out this bend, this bend, this bend, this bend. I think it goes down to here. This doesn't wrap all the way on the bottom. That's gonna be an additional piece for the fuse box. So we start off at the top here at five and a quarter, which makes it five and a quarter on this side as well. Then the next one is one inch and 13 30 seconds. Gotta love the fractional system. Life would be too easy under the metric system. Then what I like to do, just to confirm our super accurate Sharpie marks are where they need to be, is we'll just throw a tape back on it. And we're going for a 45 degree bend. And that guy right there looks pretty good. Pretty freaking money. Doesn't get much better than that for a fit up to weld it together. This is probably how I should have did it last time. Not quite fighting it near as much. And usually things just turn out better if you're not fighting them in all aspects of life. A little bit more. So there is our bent up piece ready to be welded. Still always impressed with how good some fresh aluminum looks all bent into shape. And the little sheet metal break is definitely a lifesaver for jobs like this. So we're just gonna tack the sides on for now to make sure everything fits up the way we want inside the Defender itself, which it should because we're close to what we had before. So what we'll do is work our way from one end with a couple tacks on each section to get it all locked into shape. We got this nice chunk of aluminum to help keep things in place. Shiny aluminum's always hard to get on camera, but I just wanted to do a section with a couple corners and sand it out to make sure that was gonna be the rolled edge we are looking for. And I think that is gonna do the trick. Obviously, when we finish this all out, We'll do several steps while polishing this out. We won't have those marks on there. And this will either be painted or wrapped in leather. When we get a little further towards the end of this video with a couple more pieces on the dash in, I kind of want your guys' opinion on how we should split it. Some of it's going to be body colored and some of it's going to be wrapped in the same leather as the seats. I'm undecided on which pieces are going to be which. Me being undecided. <laughs> It's quite a rare thing, isn't it? All right, now we can make our way back over to this thing. Now we can get this turd out of here. I mean, I guess it's not really necessarily a turd. It served its purpose and helped us make the nicer one. This just goes in the failure box. We're probably gonna need a big box for that around here. Ah! See how close we got. We were close. I shrunk this opening up quite a bit. Uh, I'm gonna have to clearance it about an eighth of an inch. Knew that was a possibility. But I figured easier to take material away than it is to add it. So all in all, pretty good. Right 
bigger round will come. Ah! Oh, Drop my frickin' marker. All the way down there. So now that we gave everything enough clearance, the center stack sits up there nicely. So on the top here, we got one threaded riv nut set in place so we're going to measure out and put a corresponding hole there and we're going to use that to get everything so we can start mocking up the sides the top of the dash is going to mount probably via some button head screws along that lip all the way across and then i think we're going to make a leather cap for everything to finish off the top you aren't going to see any of the hardware that cap will fasten to the top of the dash clean everything up and then if these happen to be painted we're going to have the leather on top that's not going to reflect the sun into your face because you really don't want like a light colored paint or interior on the dash it just doesn't doesn't work well. That center hole is going to be pretty easy to lay out. We're butting up against this lip, so I'm just going to measure how far that lip extends out from the bend, and that looks like three eighths of an inch. So then we'll line it up with that lip again. That puts the center of the hole nine sixteenths of an inch from the edge of that lip. But being this is only button up to the lip, we now need to subtract three eighths off of nine sixteenths. And this is where the fractional imperial measurement system is stupid. So nine sixteenths minus three eighths. So we double three eighths, six sixteenths. We're three sixteenths in from the edge of this for that center hole. That's way more complicated than it needs to be. If we were in millimeters, we would just subtract the numbers from each other and be freaking done with it. I know I'm sitting here complaining because I could just use the metric system and not do everything in inches, but 97% of the measuring devices, i.e. tape measures, in the U.S. are in inches. So we just got to deal with it sometimes. But the good news is for the distance from side to side, we don't have to measure anything. We can just set it in place and make a line. Now we just come down 3 sixteenths of an inch. And we'll center punch it to help the drill bit not walk. How's that side look? Not too shabby. Much happier with how that one looks in there versus the first attempt. Those of you who haven't been following along, um, we're gonna have our AC controls in this center stack along with a doubled in radio, something clean looking. Once everything is mounted up and sized up with the AC, that'll be cut in at a later date. Nice thing is this piece will be separate and we'll be able to zip this right in the CNC plasma again and cut all our reliefs out. Then we can also get all our mounting tabs for the inside made up. We're gonna have a lower mount down here on the inside and that'll lock the center in. Then each side will bolt to the center structure. So the center structure here is gonna kind of be like the main hub of the dash. We'll have some internal bracing to make sure it is not floppy or anything like that. Pretty happy with how that's sitting in there. It does look pretty blocky with nothing else in place. That's gonna clean up quite a bit once we have the sides and whatnot in place. Which if you guys remember, we use the CNC laser to cut the cardboard for our mock-up, which we are going to have to adjust the passenger side a little bit to accommodate the blower motor. When we did these, we made our own little mock-up box to simulate the vintage air system. But now that we have the actual mock-up piece, we can dial it in to exactly where everything needs to be. And it's not terribly far off. Our side panels will work pretty close. We're just gonna have to change the bottom. This side needs to sit a little lower than we originally intended to clear that blower motor. We'll extend this one down, match the angle up against the center stack, and that one will be good to go. Then we're also gonna raise our parcel tray up to this point. Then we'll enclose the blower motor and have our little crap trap parcel area right here. This is no longer needed because we no longer have the factory HVAC heater core and blower motor outside in the engine bay shooting in. So that'll be used for a different purpose. And with our top bar roughly like that, we are still going to have open air through the bulkhead vents. That's a big part of this dash design that I'm going for. I want to make sure these still can flip up and shoot some fresh air right through to you because that right there is neat as all get out. If you're not familiar with the Land Rovers, this is essentially what they do. You can open them and close them. Open, closed, pretty slick. And on the driver's side, let's check where we're sitting at. And I think the driver's side will work as is. I'm gonna leave it a little asymmetrical. Normally, I would adjust this side to match 
the passenger side and come a little lower with this piece. But I want to leave as much knee room as possible. It obviously fits me just fine, but I'm only 5'6", so I want to accommodate as tall of an individual as possible. It'd be kind of a dick move for me just to make it fit me. So I think the left side lower dash is good as is. Let's go into the computer, make our adjustments so we can blast the two lower pieces out. Sash has been patiently waiting to go inside. She's been out here keeping an eye on things so I don't make another mess up like that. With her supervising, this is going much better. All right, so we took our piece made our notes on what we needed to do. This needed to be two and a quarter inches lower to clear that blower motor. And here is everything drawn up. This would be the passenger side, driver's side. You can see the driver's side has the cut out for the steering column and the passenger side is a little bit longer because we're coming further out on that lower piece. I adjusted the passenger side piece to match. And then we got some of the mounting tabs that we will be using. Drew those up quick. Hopefully those work out the way I'm thinking. And here's what that pro looks like after we put it in the post processor to account for the offsets on the plasma torch cutting and with our start points. Time to go fishing. So we got our pieces cut out for the lower part of the dash. And I think they look pretty spiffy. This is all gonna be pretty simple. We just have to put two bends in each of these panels. They'll get welded to this. And then I made up a bunch of mounting tabs that will bend up and weld onto the backside to start getting that guy secure. Now you can get a visual of the difference between the two sides. This is obviously driver's side with the steering column cut out. That's the passenger side. That's some stuff I'm knocking down. And then we went ahead and bent a upper lip on each one for a little finisher piece. Be able to tie that in with the inside structure. That gives everything a good, or at least I think good look. I know I've mentioned it in the past, but this is by far my favorite welding tool. It's a little log splitter thingy, my bobber, but the point is perfect as a third hand because as it turns out, I only have two. But it's nice and heavy, it doesn't roll, comes to a point, has a fat end if we need that, it's rounded for tube. It just doesn't get much better than that right there. I mean, I guarantee it does get better, but you'd have to buy something that is designed for welding, when instead you can just use this free thing I found. So we got our two lower pieces tacked together with a couple of the mounts in place. These are the ones going directly into the center. Then the lower part is gonna get some of these bent up 
This side we may need to tweak a little bit. We'll throw it up there and kind of see, but I think this isn't quite right. Not that I've ever been known to screw anything up before. Around here we just call those learning opportunities. But yes, these guys will get bent up and be secured via a bolt through the rib nut. So this will go something like that. This guy's gonna go something like that. Need to mark it with a Sharpie. You stay there. Sorry you guys kind of fell, but we'll get this guy tacked on. Back to the Sharpie. Use that to mark out the holes we need. So those holes will be filled with riv nuts eventually, but for now, we'll nut and bolt it. So we're kind of gonna pre-assemble this and throw it together. This will be much easier once it's all finished. Now we can go back together. I think I'm very much in love with the driver's side. I'll pull this off to get a better look. But that's exactly the style I was going for. We'll have some nice room to tuck away some wiring for the column and some of the HVAC vent tubing. And I freaking love how this follows the footwell perfectly. I think that is the ticket on the driver's side. Man, I love it when a plan comes together. Some days are better than others with those plans, but this is the ticket. This gives me a good feeling about how the rest of this is gonna look. There's our next little problem onto the rest of it. Passenger side, I just have taped up there because I'm not 100% sold on this fatter front edge yet. I'll leave you my thoughts in just a second, but there is a look from the back, seeing both of them. Just not loving how bulky this ends up. So I'm kind of thinking that this is going to become a more complex piece and we'll leave this section up to the end of the blower motor like this and for the rest of it match the same height as of right now i'm just not a fan of how different that looks side to side i think if we cut it there and come up that balance everything out much more so like this side would stay the same from there over follow that same line from the footwell up and cutting off this lower corner and that way both sides would end up ending end up ending in the same spot over here let me know your thoughts i'm gonna leave this sit for a few days and step away from it and kind of look at it a few different times you think it'd look better if we kind of even out the side hide the blower motor even out this side as of right now i think that's a ticket but the biggest problem is everything is the same colorish right now and it's kind of playing tricks with my brain on how everything looks because this may look right once we have it wrapped in leather and then body color painted so i threw our mock-up top bars in place to give a better look at the full situation still not in love with it but it does look a little better with those upper bars the upper bars I think I need to make up a tool to bend up. Trying to decide if I want to do a bigger radius than these bends here. I think visually that would look nice, but then again it might look odd having the same radius on this, 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 and then something different here, especially this one. So being that radius is in line with that, it may just work better to do that. What I'm saying here is I'm kind of at a big decision point and I'm just gonna have to stare at it for a bit, especially with how well the driver's side turned out. And that one I know in my gut feels good. The fact that this one doesn't kind of gives me my answer. But now that I'm looking at it, I think those upper bars would look good with the radius that we get out of our sheet metal brake here. So that may make life easier. I thought I was gonna have to build a jig to bend those around something else like say a piece of tube to match the radius I wanted. Now that this is all sitting there, tacked together, mocked up, I can kind of get a feel on what I want to do for painted versus leather. I'm pretty sure these top bars and this center stack are probably gonna look best in leather to match the seats. And I'm thinking the lower panels 
will do in body color. Then maybe leather on these side panels with a little logo burned into the leather would be kind of cool right there. Kind of like that, but maybe something a little more Lost cause -y. Over here, we're gonna have a nice amount of room to make a little tray, have our little parcel shelf, so I'm happy about that. Minus a few little details and me being nitpicky on a few things, this really did come together how I was envisioning it, and I'm super pleased. Gonna be a neat little touch on how we're converting this from right-hand drive to left-hand drive and getting a more modern HVAC system installed while not having to go to a Puma-style dash or having a huge air conditioning hanging down on the passenger side here with a nice classic Land Rover look. Just a nice little custom touch to what is a very much custom LS3 swap defender. And these right here are really the kind of projects that give me a lot of joy in life. I love doing this type of thing. It's always fun to take something out of your brain and make it a reality. And I'm very blessed to have the space and all the fun tools back here to make all this a reality. With that being said, I appreciate you guys watching, appreciate you subscribing, and it was a very fun day to be back on the LS3 swap defender.